Hey all, here OS Reviews. This time last year we checked out the B-Link GR7, which was a flagship grade mini PC with a powerful AMD Ryzen 7 processor, Radeon graphics, all in an aluminum alloy chassis with plenty of I.O. It was one of the fastest mini PCs that we had seen at the time, and it's an open secret that AMD has been crushing it with their Ryzen chips, often delivering better price to performance ratio than their Intel counterparts. Well, one year later, things have slightly changed because of the growing pressure from AMD. Intel is starting to up their game as well. And so today we're taking a look at the latest B-Link SCI-12. As the name implies, it's powered by Intel's 12th gen processors. This model as configured the i5-1235U, which is a very powerful chipset that on paper is even faster than the Ryzen 7 found in last year's model, thanks to the fact that this is now a DECA-core 10-core processor with 12 threads. That's a pretty big leap in performance compared to quad-core architecture found on a lot of their mid-tier chipsets from just a year ago. Other specs are inclusive of Wi-Fi 6, active cooling, support for dual HDMI connections, as well as an interesting fabric texture on the top this year, which they claim is also a waterproof fabric, and at the same time allows better airflow to pass through compared to conventional aluminum, for example. Contributing to better thermals compared to similarly specced mini PCs, they claim that max temperature here will get up to 73 degrees at 100% CPU usage, which is very impressive. So. Hopefully that means there won't be any thermal throttling, despite the fact there are so many cores packed into a tiny box. And some final specs here include, again, a base frequency of 3.3 gigahertz, a burst up to 4.4 gigahertz, pretty ridiculous, and also Intel's IRIX XE graphics. We have 500 gigabytes of SSD built on in, further expandable up to 2 TBs. The base configuration with 16 or 32 gigs of RAM starts at $460, often goes on sale for a little little bit less, which is also a very attractive price. In fact, that's a lower cost than the GR7, which actually started at 500. So that's pretty impressive to find. Just the mini PC itself, along with a quick user guide. Additional accessories that are bundled in include a HDMI full-size cable for connecting it to a display, which is a nice freebie. We also have access to the power adapter, which is actually contained in two parts. Now, with so much raw horsepower, it's expected that this thing will draw a little bit more juice, but this is definitely a larger power brick, I'd say, compared to a lot of other mini PCs that we've seen in the past. Granted, if they were able to use USB Type-C for universal power delivery, that would also be nice to find, but it is what it is. Tearing open the protective wrap and taking a closer look here at the design. It's surprisingly compact and sleek, in fact not that much larger than a regular mini PC with much less powerful internals. We can make out some of the cooling components on the edges and then on the back we have all the I.O. once again, two full-sized HDMI ports up to 4K resolution output, Ethernet if you don't want to use Wi-Fi, power adapter, and then on the front we have two more USB 3.0 ports, a USB Type-C supporting data as well as charging output, and also an auxiliary 3.5mm headphone jack and a power key. The frame this time around is constructed out of a polycarbonate plastic as opposed to aluminum, so that is one area where they were able to cut down on costs a little bit, but as a result it does feel a little bit more lightweight. Definitely not cheap though. The back here is still made out of metal, so we have a few accents going on, along with the top here being made out of that fabric material that reminds me of something like the Google Home Mini, along with just the B-Link SEI logo there on the edge. This is how much smaller it is compared to the G R7 from last year and has almost an identical thickness as well. So you are saving considerable space here for very similar I.O. Uh, and also located here on the back, we just have maybe two less USB ports versus this model and one less HDMI port, uh, but that is still a pretty big reduction there in form factor, which is great. Although one other a mission here in terms of hardware would be the GR7 did have a fingerprint scanner on the front. Finally, just a quick size comparison with a cell phone with a 6.7 inch display, modest by today's standards, and you can tell how small this thing is. So out of the 500 gig SSD, you get around 430 gigs left for you to store other files and programs with. A clean boot takes less than five seconds to turn on, and immediately you're presented to a really snappy user interface where everything just flies. Just as reference, some of the other common mini PCs that we have seen in the past have rocked chipsets, including the Celeron 
on into 350 found at around $200 price range, and then you can move up to slightly better chipsets including the Celeron J4125, also a common choice on many lower end mini PCs, quite similar to the Intel Pentium Silver in 6000, another common chip that's getting a little more popular these days, still hovering around 3000. And then you see a bigger jump when you're comparing it with the AMD Ryzen 7 3750H that was in the B-Link GTR7 that we checked out last year. This one is now giving you 8000. 200 pass mark score. There are slightly newer Ryzen chips that we've seen since then, including the Ryzen 5 4500U, which cracks the 10,000 mark. But now compared with this aforementioned 12th gen i5-1235U, we are cracking the 13K mark. Again, synthetic benchmarks I don't think matters the most in the world. In fact, you should take them with a grain of salt. But in reality, it translates to very fast performance. So aside from being the highest score we've seen on a mini PC, it does translate to getting you a very smooth user experience with, again, almost no lag or delay as you're doing anything on the machine. In terms of, again, power draw, it's rated at 15 watts, so this is not going to be the most energy efficient chip in the world, which is kind of expected out of the 10 core architecture, but at the same time, because this is a desktop, you'll be plugged into power at all times, so I suppose it doesn't really matter. And the part that's most important is A, the machine runs really cool. So in fact, the rated around 70 degrees is mostly accurate. It never gets hot or even warm on the sides unless you're doing intensive 4K video editing combined with gaming, then it gets slightly warm, but still never hot. So we are getting good thermals along with a pretty quiet unit other performance aspects such as in the real world if you're trying to browse the web let's try and open up a few different tabs like the verge or cnet these are pretty complex pages but you can tell how it almost loads instantly the moment that you click on the link everything is buttery smooth when it comes to scrolling it's a pretty comfortable experience even for those that like to open up tons of tabs things are still zippy and responsive let's go into playing back some videos and check out how it handles 4K video and it also will pull up the stats for nerds to take a closer look at frame rates. Again, Wi-Fi reception quality is also pretty good thanks to the Wi-Fi 6 built on in despite not having an external antenna. And you can tell here that as we are playing things along, it's doing very well. We have a handful of tabs open in the background along with some additional programs. And even so, playing back a couple of minutes of this 4K streaming Ultra HD clip, we only have one or two drop frames. Overall, it's not visible to the eye at all. Everything is super smooth. It's fast to load without any buffering with strong reception quality. And again, a dream to use, even if you're using it just for media and entertainment. Proof GPU also comes into play when you are editing videos, which this machine can definitely handle. If you're trying to, say, stitch together about a five minute clip in 4K resolution, it will usually export itself in around a minute to a minute and a half which is also pretty fast and speedy if you're a content creator or you're trying to make something for friends and family or a class this is something that can definitely handle those tasks one benefit of the added ram and faster cpu is you can handle bigger files say if you're trying to max out at around 1 gb in terms of excel files this will still take a moment or two to open up but afterwards things can still load without freezing up and you're able to run calculations pivot tables charts generate all of those things for work as well as for school alike. Not to mention that these days a lot of tools you can also access over the cloud, running on even more powerful servers elsewhere. That's of course another option that you can draw on, but having the benefit of a slightly faster chipset means that even if you're doing things locally and you're severed from the internet, you can still process these files and get the job done. Last but not least would be a little bit of gaming on this unit, which for the most part if you're using again full HD settings, a lot of slightly newer titles such as Grand Theft Auto, Valorant, as you saw there, it's able to play at a very smooth rate. Like I said, a dedicated GPU will get you even better performance in this regard. If you are, let's say, a hardcore gamer, you can arguably find even better performing units out there that are gaming machines, but those will be much larger at the end of the day than something that is so compact that it can fit into your backpack or the palm of your hand if you need to take it with you when on the go. So overall, very good balance in terms of still getting you a decent enough experience for some of these games, 
not something that you can say about any of the other super low cost mini PCs with Celeron chips. Uh, that would be pretty much unplayable, especially on these newer titles that we're looking at here, like Forza Horizon 5. These are still, again, games that came out the last year or two, and it's doing a pretty good job natively on the unit. Not to mention if you're trying to play back emulation titles from early 2000s or 90s, it can play like a dream, really without any problems at all. Not to mention, again, we are in the advent of cloud gaming. So if you do have to play back even more AAA style titles or maybe games that require more space, services like xCloud can further get you an even smoother experience as long as you have a good enough connection to the internet. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the B-Link SCI-12. And overall, I have to say I'm quite impressed by the level of performance that we're seeing here. Very well-rounded considering the price and the portability. So you can check out more details in the links down below if you're looking for a powerful new mini PC Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the B-Link SCI 12.